Dextrous, baby. I love this shit. I'm what you call a lone wolf. I like to walk alone. I go hunt for the feeling. I thrive out on my own. Look at my eyes, look at the prize, look at the mm, yeah, mm, yeah. Heart in my chest, holding my breath. I'm addicted to the game. My name is Brad Kuhnert. I started hunting with my dad in the uh, late 60s. I've been part of the Lone Wolf team now for 30 years. Most of my hunting has been done on public land uh, in the beautiful northern Wisconsin. Uh, I've also hunted other states and Canada also. Uh, my true passion though is hunting the ghost bucks of the Northwoods. I've been blessed to have harvested several Boone and Crockett and Pope and Young Bucks. My passion for saddle hunting began in the mid 80s. Uh, the more I saddle hunted, the more I realized what a great tool it was. Uh, but there was definitely limitations to it then, especially that there was no platform uh, out there to hunt out of. And uh, I also had some issues with some of the restrictiveness of the saddle itself. Uh, so in the early 90s, I had a friend of mine start welding up platforms for me to hunt out of, and I hunted out of these platforms for probably 15 years or so. Uh, in 2007, uh, I introduced the first saddle platform and mini climbing sticks to the hunting industry. Uh, the saddle platform was the Lone Wolf Assassin. Uh, the next step I had was to improve on some of the limitations with the saddle itself that I encountered over the years when I was hunting, uh, particularly the bridge angle and how it attached to the tree. Uh, over the years, some of the limitations that the saddle had definitely cost me several trophy bucks. So I wanted to design a new harness and uh, the harness that I came up with is kind of a crossover between a traditional tree saddle and a lineman's belt. So with my newly designed harness and Cooner and Ambush platform in hand, I was uh, definitely ready for the 2022 deer hunting season. I headed to Iowa in early October to start hunting. Uh, I had several encounters with many different bucks, but not the one I was looking for or just not close enough for a shot. Uh, I did have a brief encounter with the buck that I found a shed of, but I uh, didn't have an opportunity to get him on video or anything. So I headed home. I headed back to Iowa in early November to start hunting.
with the mature bucks up on their feet moving during the daylight hours, it was time for me to start running and gunning. Uh, I was moving stand locations uh, two to three times a day uh, with the Kunert's ambush and the newly designed harness I had. It was roughly taking me 10 minutes or so to set up each new stand location. This method of hunting isn't necessarily how I hunt them in northern Wisconsin, but uh, it was definitely working down here in Iowa for me. November 11th. Spotted a really good buck here this morning. So I'm gonna go uh, make a move on him and set the Cooner and Ambush up and uh, see what happens for this afternoon and e evening. Uh, he's a good buck. I'm sure it's the one I found the shed of earlier this spring. Uh, he's in an area where there's a bunch of cedar and uh, we'll just see what's going on in there. Uh, got some trail cam pictures of him with uh, lone wolf uh, camera and uh, so I'm gonna set up the Cooner's ambush for this evening and see how things play out and uh, make a move on them tomorrow morning if nothing else and go from there but uh, there's uh, they really seem to be up and moving right now so uh, just hopefully keep on top of them and keep moving and see what see what see what it all plays out <laughs> my third setup for today I'm gonna go in and this cedar right here. Saw a couple bucks this morning come through this, right through the meadow here. There's a trail about 20 yards from from this cedar. So I'm gonna just cut this open a little bit and uh, sit here for the sit here for the evening post. There's a really nice buck behind that door and fawn.
just shot the one back and here comes another one. He's looking at the deer I just shot. Cooner's ambush, baby. In this harness. Unbelievable footage. Unbelievable footage. Forty yard, he's laying there. Once the buck that had gored my deer started to walk away, I, I thought I'd grunt at him to see if I could bring him in.
When I started running at him and he turned coming towards me, I couldn't believe it. to have him get to within seven yards. And you can kind of see in the video him look down. I think he sees my climbing sticks underneath my tree. Uh, to have captured both them bucks that close to me being less than five feet off the ground was amazing. I was definitely truly blessed to have captured that video. Well, here's my set up I just shot that buck out of and you can see the video of where uh, that other 10 point had that broken G2 or 3 come in and start goring that buck I shot here's my setup I'm in a small cedar again here's how small this tree is that I'm in and my buck is laying right right over there he didn't go 30 yards I didn't get him on film I don't think because when I turned the camera I shot him at probably four yards and I'm um, four feet off the ground in this cedar tree total height is maybe 12 feet I didn't get much of a recovery video of my buck that evening because uh, I was pretty limited with time just wanted to kind of run through the scenario of kind of what happened on that buck I harvested the other day. Just want to kind of show you my setup and how everything worked out. Uh, you can kind of see my bow and uh, arrows up there yet. But uh, here's where that bucket came in. He walked right to the cedar. Right here, he's, you know, three, four yards away, but... I think you can see him looking down. Uh, he noticed, I think, them climbing sticks laying on the ground there. And at that point, uh, he wasn't alarmed, but he started uh, turning and walking right next to this cedar tree. And uh, as he was walking, I could see this opening that I'm going to get to here. And that's where I was. Uh, able to get the shot and yeah, that's when I kind of grunted and uh, stopped him right here and was able to uh, get the shot off. That's that's the tree line where uh, he had went down and where that other buck uh, came in and started goring him. Uh, but uh, here's the setup. First of all, um, using the uh, Cooner ambush and uh, I was using a prototype of the new uh, ghost harness that'll be coming out. Uh, I don't know if there's any other products out there that would allow me to make the shot I had to make. Uh, first of all, the larger platform allowed me to be able to shift my feet that I needed to to turn to make that shot and this ring uh, allowed me, you know, controlled and slow, easy movement to be able to turn and make that shot in, you know, great form. Uh, and that, that's what I love about this setup. But here's, here's the size of the tree. Uh, here's my trigger finger. 
it's small. Yep, so it was a small, small tree. Uh, one of the smaller ones I've been in and, and harvested something out of, but uh, uh, it worked great. Uh, it was just a great setup. This is Andre Cristo from Lone Wolf Custom Gear. I wanted to thank you for watching Whitetail Addictions and ask that you become one of our silent partners by hitting the YouTube subscribe button and following us on Facebook and Instagram.